Something around Squat Box. They were going to do a warm water pattern. It's a warm water pattern patterned after the uh, gurgling wog that I've posted prior to this. It's on the site. And uh, the gurgling frog, both of which are very effective patterns. It's the gurgling wog. And most of you have seen the gurgling frog. A little bit larger. Well, today we're going to tie the mini wog. Uh, it was very effective for me this summer. I tied it late in the summer. I fished it a half dozen times. It did very well. I'm looking forward to hitting the spawning beds for gills early spring. I think this will be the uh, the predominant fly. Hope to to post some good results for it. But it did do well in the fall. And uh, let's go over how I tie it. I start off with a size eight Gamakatsu stinger hook, and Danville. 210 denier black thread. Now we're going to start our thread behind the eye, wrap a base back, we're going to bring it back just and we're going to stop just before the bend of the hook. This pattern, we don't want to wrap back around that bend. We're going to stay on top. The first material we're going to tie in is dyed black pheasant tail. And I'm going to strip about a half inch. When I say a half inch, I'm going by the amount that's on coming off the, the, uh, the feather quill. The quill of the feather. I'm going to sweep them all out. I'm going to take about a half inch worth, even the tips up. It's going to give us a sizable clump, but when it's tied in, it's not really that big. I'm going to measure it the length of the shank, the usable shank, the flat section, not the whole hook. And we're going to tie it in at the rear. And the next material we're going to tie in are tan silver badger Brahma feathers. These are hen feathers. I take two of them, I get them directional, and I line them up together. We're going to tie these in on either side on either side of the tail and we're going to keep them just like the tips are just past those pheasant tail fibers and you want them to kind of stay together they don't have to stay exact And then we're going to apply two more to the other side. It's a short tail and leg section on this. This is a, a small popper version, like a bluegill popper version of the gurgling wog. We'll tie these two in on the other side. And again, they don't have to stay exactly together. You just want to make sure they remain on the side and they don't roll. Bind them tight. And trim off the butt section. Don't get too worried around that because you're going to bind down over that again. The next thing you're going to tie in is your foam body. 
just like the gurgling wog this is going to only be about 3 16 of an inch wide I trim a point at the end I'm going to tie that point in about a eye length behind the eye grab that tip that locks it in and then bind back over it and you're going to take it all the way back to the point in your ta of your tail tie-in and then just bind down over that foam good and tight and bring your thread forward to an eye length back again At this point you're going to tie in black woolly bugger chenille. This is Orvis. It's black, uh, it's medium chenille, ultra chenille with uh, a hint of glint in it. I don't know if it's Andron or Light Bright or it's one of those. And you're going to wrap back over that. And then bring your thread back to an eye length back from the eye. And we're going to wrap our body. Just bring that chenille forward. And tie off. And then you're going to tie in your legs. I use a single strand of centipede. This is uh, the small. Loop it around my thread. Fold it in half, loop it around my thread. Bring it tight and then grab a bite of it. Just after you form that U, just grab it about a sixteenth of an inch behind that U bind it tight and then the next thing we're going to do is bring our foam forward you're going to bring it forward pull it tight, doesn't have to be pulled you know exceptionally tight and bind that down about an eye length back. You don't want to tie it down too close to the eye because then even though this overlaps the eye it won't it won't sit right in the film when you tie your tip into it. Next material we're going to tie in is optional. I tie a tag on this, a visual tag, a post because uh, I can see it better in the water. This will sit low in the film. I use Antron yarn, orange, fluorescent orange, and I I fold it in half and then I fold it again. I want four strands of it. So I fold it in half, then fold it again, doubled it back on itself. So in essence, when I tie it in, there's four strands front and back. I tie it directional tie it in at the at the tie-in point of the head give a couple wraps and I fold the foam back build just a little bit of a head underneath there and then we're gonna whip finish We'll cut that off a little bit here, just for the whip finishers. Effort. Bring your foam back. Do a three turn whip finish. Okay, then what you're going to do next with the Antron is you're going to grab it. You can leave it as long as you want. I try and fold it as short as possible. 
just to alleviate waste. And I pull it together and I cut it off about a quarter inch in length. And it just leaves that little post up on top. You can see it. That's all I want. I can see that when it's sitting in pond film or or uh, slightly submerged. Then I'm going to cut the head off the same length uh, as the post, about a quarter inch. I trim the corners just as, out of personal preference. And then I'm going to trim the legs about even with the bend of the hook. I'm going to measure to the to the back of the hook without stretching it. I'm going to trim each one off about the same length. And I left that one a little long. And there it is. The mini wog. So gurgling wog version of a bluegill popper. This did really well on gills in the fall. I expect them to do exceptional to do exceptional um, this spring on the beds. Hope it adds your warm water box. Good luck. See you on the water.